Hi, Kate. Thanks for joining us. How are you today? I'm doing so well. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Awesome. So now we have this our next discussion here, and we are going to talk about the mid-market to enterprise prospecting strategies. Awesome. Um, how about we start an introduction of Kate? Uh, I looked at your previous experience, so now you are a head of uh, sales development at Segment. You've uh, worked at Intercom for for years, SDR account executive, uh, account executive team lead. Uh, can you tell us about that experience? what uh, skills you took out absolutely yeah so you're spot on that's a great summary um so yeah i am currently leading the sales development team at segment in EMEA. we are growing really fast we've doubled the team this year so it's been quite a journey um, and i'm so excited for us to continue on that that journey as we now uh, partner more closely with twilio who acquired us um late last year so you're right. Um, I have been working in SaaS for the last seven years um, across companies like Meltwater, but probably most notably Intercom because that's where I spent the biggest chunk of time. Um, and I worked across the SDR team on both the inbound and the outbound side um, and across the AE team, so closing new business. So there's a lot of takeaways for me during that time. Um, and one of the things I realized was how um, interested I was and how passionate I was about sales development and about unlocking opportunities for early career sales reps to grow as sales professionals um, and advance within their, their careers. So during my time at Intercom, you would have seen me contribute to like thought leadership on the um, on the SDR side uh, of the blog, as well as um, contributing to our SDR Academy, which trained all the SDRs out there on actually how to use Intercom. And it was that that kind of propelled me forward. Um, and I took that interest and absolutely ran with it. And when the opportunity came up to, to lead the sales development function here in EMEA, at segment i i jumped on it um so i've been here now for the last 11 months uh, or so um, and i'm so excited to continue to um to grow that interest uh this year we've really really doubled down on how we chart career pathing for our sdrs how we think about setting them up for success to get to their quota what our prospecting strategies look like how they need to tweak or change for our um our EMEA sdrs um, and it's been a great journey so far so that's a little bit about about me alex awesome thank you so much for uh giving that intro it really provides a lot of context as to what we're going to talk about next and since we are talking about the uh, mid-market and enterprise prospecting strategies, um, let's say if we look at a company that is targeting SMBs and would like to move up market, right? So definitely there is some adjustment that need to be uh, made to their process. Where would you say they should start? Oh, so great question. So I should give some context here in that at segment i lead across all of the different segments that we have so our growth segment which would be most closely aligned to smbs our mid-market segment uh, and our enterprise segment and um, so this is a topic that is definitely definitely near and dear um to my heart so let me um let me take you back and, and let me give you my thoughts here so I think that when you start thinking about moving up market you almost need to take it right back to basics and think a little bit about the foundations that you've laid for your SDR team and the foundations that you have in place at that fundamental level, I think you need to have the right tools, you need to have the right processes, and you need to have the right enablement in place to actually facilitate that journey of market and for it to be a successful journey. So to successfully co um, conquer those mid-market and enterprise segments, you need a change of approach. What you did for that SMB audience is not going to going to work or going to cut it as you make that transition. I think you almost have to move from a more uh, scrappy approach to having a very solid, very clear strategy and having the tools in place to execute on that strategy. So let me dive in a little bit more. What do I mean about having the systems and tools in place? Um, at a basic level, you need to have um, a tool that your SDRs can use to work efficiently and consistently every day. And that goes without saying, that's a sales engagement platform. So somewhere where they can leverage sequences, somewhere where they can leverage cadences so that they can execute effectively on all of the research they have done and on all of the, um, the prospecting efforts they have garnered through working with their account executives. They also need to have the access to the right data, 
right? So a tool that can give them the contact information of the buyers that they're now pursuing. So whether that's something like a lead IQ or a Zoom info, it's crucial that they be enabled with a tool like that so they can effectively um, target these more upmarket market buyers. Um, the next thing that you should probably consider making a switch on is your SDR targets and goes along with that, the expectations you have of your SDRs every day when it comes to the KPIs that they might have. So your target for your SMB SDRs can't really be the same as it might be for the enterprise folks. Think about enterprise deal cycles, they're longer. And the um, think about what we want enterprise SDRs to do. We want them to go really deep in organizations rather than going super wide across a ton of accounts like we might see in a more velocity style approach. So you have to make sure that your targets match the segments that you're in. And then your expectations should align with that. So how many prospects are your SDRs getting in touch with every day? And um, how many accounts are they touching? What sort of expectations do we have around activity? And how are you actually tailoring that to these new segments that you're endeavoring to, um, to break into essentially? And then I think the final thing that you should probably consider adjusting or uh, tailoring to this new motion for you is the enablement that you have in place for your SDRs because there's new skills that they need to develop in this transition, right? They need to research more um, deeply and more effectively than maybe they ever have before. And they need to be able to document that research, to do it in a really methodical way, and to know which parts of that they need to use in their messaging. So we really need to have the coaching in place around account research, around prospecting, around understanding seniority in an organization and account mapping so that those SDRs can be successful. So investing in how you coach, in how you train, and in the enablement that you provide for your SDRs will be absolutely crucial to your success in making this transition. So three things, tools, targets, and training, essentially. Definitely, right. Um, thank you for giving such a detailed kind of explanation as to where we start and then sum it up in the end as well. And something that you mentioned, right, that we will, they will have to definitely start adjusting the targets, uh, focusing on doing research. And another thing is that the messaging probably is also going to change. Do you see that the style should be more formal when it comes to like targeting enterprise level companies? I think it totally depends, to be honest, on what we mean by like formal in this instance. Like, what are we equating to formality? Is it professionalism? Because I think if it's professionalism, then it kind of goes without saying, no matter what segment we're in, it should yeah. be professional, right? Um, mm -hmm. But when we're thinking about formal, I think that's almost one of the mistakes we can make because that almost means, are we trying to be less creative? Are we trying to be less fun? And I think that can be a trap you fall into where your messaging becomes a little bit bland, maybe a bit unassuming, and it starts to lack the character it needs to capture the attention of the buyer. And I don't think it really matters what segment we're in. At the end of the day, we're still selling to people, right? And we're still trying to capture the attention of people. So we shouldn't sacrifice creativity in an effort to try and be formal as we move up market. Because in order to stand out, I think we need to be to have two things, right? Our messaging needs to be different no matter what segment we're in and it needs to be relevant. So different, um, whether that's like doubling down on personalization or using visual content, we need something that helps us stand out. Um, but I think it's that relevance piece that's even more and more important for enterprise SDRs. What nuggets of information have they learned? What are they pointing to? How credible do they appear in their messaging? What testimonials are they pulling on? It's the relevance that I think is more important when um, prospecting into senior execs, maybe then trying to be overly formal or taking a, um, yeah, taking almost like a colder approach in some ways. And you actually creativity quite a few times here because this is something that always has to stay on the table when we're talking about our approach um can you give any examples of like creative strategies when it comes to targeting uh it's larger accounts so of course if, if we are talking about channel wise right email stays phone linkedin but these these won't suffice right at this stage so we're gonna need more creative strategies 
Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I couldn't agree more. I can talk a little bit about creativity in a second and some of the more like interesting things that I've seen our SDRs do mm -hmm. to success. But let's talk a little bit about um, uh, those channels, maybe a little bit first. I, I'm mm -hmm. so interested in prospecting channels because like, when I started my sales career, I had a desk phone, I had a laptop, I had Outlook, and that was pretty much it. Like <laughs> There was no sales engagement tool. There was no fancy dialer. It was just a desk phone and off you go, kind of. And times have changed so much in that right I think no more so than during the last 12 to 18 months when we've all been in this remote world and our buyers have have totally adapted um, and one of the things that I would actually point you all to look at is Forrester's report on B2B buying which kind of gives us some insight on how buyers are thinking about purchasing these days they're still looking for um, one to many forums whether that's online events or webinars whether it's conversations with movers and shakers in the industry. They're also trying to leverage their network and trusted experts. So to go back to your question, the answer is yes, we need to employ additional tactics beyond what we can do through email, through the phone, through LinkedIn. So some of the things when you're moving up market that you should think about adopting are things like events, investing in executive roundtables, networking opportunities. So your prospects, your um, top targets can learn from your champions where they can network with one another and learn from one another essentially. The second thing I would think about, um, and this is probably something you're gonna to need to do in tandem with your marketing team, is uh, getting them to provide some sort of cover for you. Um, so think about what they can do from an ABM perspective. How can they actually increase brand awareness at the top of funnel so that when you're going in and you're prospecting into the business, there's already some awareness or, uh, there because we've done education um, before we've started penetrating into the account. So some form of ABM strategy can give you air cover almost as you're, um, you're going into the account. Um, and the last thing is, and, and this kind of leads us on to those creative strategies. I think one of the things that you could employ as you move up market is direct mail. So sending something to a prospect, sending something to their team, whether that's um, that they are in, you know, stage one um, and you're trying to get more time on the calendar with them or the deal's actually progressing through pipeline, we can actually use direct mail as a way to engage with them, to send them swag, um, to send them uh, books or content or whatever it might be, just something different to capture their attention. Awesome. I, I like the, that you mentioned that it's good to use in the prospecting, which we're like mostly focusing on, but then how it helps to move the deal along as well, right? So you stay present with them, even though you're remote with them, of course, but then like any warm gift throughout uh, the conversation that you're already having with them can yeah. really help it move forward. Exactly. Because awesome. if you're going to invest in actually getting that conversation going, we need to also invest in keeping it going because it's been so hard won, right? So keeping that moving through pipeline mm -hmm. and using events, using um, uh, direct mail, that can be a really great ways to do that. Awesome. So, so one of these additional channels that you would say for uh, like these larger larger deals, direct mail is like definitely one to keep, right? Have yeah. it, have it, having it as one of those important channels along with email and. And LinkedIn and calling, right? Yeah, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Um, I, I even heard of this uh, service where um, the um, some of the enterprise SDRs, w when they uh, like order a celebrity to do a cameo for, uh, for for the lead that they're targeting, right? So let's say they, they research them, right? They know that this particular person is a fan of, of, of the celebrity. So they get them to record a video. Do you do anything crazy like this? Like really sort of going out of your way? So first of all, I love that. And if there's anyone here who has tried that, can you please let me know <laughs> how that actually worked for your team? Because I am sure there is my team back there who are thinking, hey, we would love to try that. I think it's super creative. Um, so I think for us, we haven't tried that, but I think the biggest way we aim to stand out is by using video. Um, I think it's the biggest, best, and probably the most accessible way that you can um, differentiate your messaging. Um, and it's so easy to get started with it, right? What do you need? You need a laptop, you need your phone maybe, 
Um, and a whiteboard is a bonus. So you can draw like a quirky uh, picture or write a note, have an interesting call to action. Um, but all of that is is kind of free to get started with, right? And then you can invest in tools as you, you scale this out. It's the quickest, easiest way to increase your reply rate and to increase your meeting rate. Um, because if you think about who's on the other side, right? 65% of us are actually visual learners and we process images faster than we process text. So why wouldn't we try to cater to our buyers in that way? Um, there are a lot of teams who are using video, but there are more that aren't. So by adopting that channel, you're differentiating yourself, you're catering to your buyer, and you're giving yourself a way to stand out. So that's one of the things. Um, we do have some wordsmiths on our team who, you know, can kind of get lyrical and craft some poetry um, and, and write some great notes. I am not skilled in that way, but if you have folks who have, that's worked very well in the past. Um, but we also, I would say, creatively use incentives. So um, things like sending a coffee voucher um, in your meeting reminder. So if you have a meeting with a buyer, um, or with a prospect coming up tomorrow, you might say, hey, here's a coffee, um, here's a coffee voucher, grab yourself a coffee on us ahead of our call. So great way to check in and make sure it's actually going ahead, um, but also like nice like uh, token ahead of the meeting. Same can be said for your follow-up, right? And um, when you're following up for that meeting, use an incentive like a coffee for pushing that conversation along. It was great to chat. Hope you have a good afternoon. Here's a coffee on us. We're looking forward to talking more. So using um, uh, incentives like that, little vouchers, tokens like that creatively is um is is a great way to to try new things okay and so if we are um we are sending swag right has it changed now that um that everyone is like sorry not everyone but more people are working remotely now so are there any like new best practices when it comes to sending swag now compared to maybe two years ago yeah, it's harder, right? Because you can't just send it to someone's office like you used to be able to. Mm -hmm. So you really have to um, endeavor to spark a conversation and a connection with that person and then get their details so that you can send them something. So the actual process for doing that has changed. It almost requires you to um, be really invested in sparking that initial conversation. But with sending something like a coffee, um, if people are working from home, uh, I don't think anything has changed there. They can pop out in the morning and, and grab their coffee. That's something very quick and easy. You can send them uh, and it might be the only walk they get away from their desk that day. So it could be a nice treat for them as well. So you're saying in this case, it's best to first establish contact and then get the details of uh, where to From send, a direct which mail also, perspective, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And which also warms up the conversation in an additional way, right? And it's also that's something that we mentioned earlier today is that you, again, can use this as a nudge, like, sorry, as a reason for your message, right? So you're saying that like, you can use this, um, your, uh, how, did, can, how can I say this? Like the thing that you're going to send them something as a reason for your touch, for, for another touch point, right? And like when it comes to personalized messages, we touched on it just a little bit. Sorry, video, video, personalized video messages. We touched on mm -hmm. it just a little bit. Uh, I was wondering, so does your team also use video extensively throughout the prospecting, uh, throughout the whole prospecting cycle? Yeah, so we aim to mm -hmm. be multi-channel in, our, in mm -hmm. our outreach and video is quite a big part of that. So you'll see us use video in two ways. We use Vidyard um, and we'll insert the video into our emails, for example. And we also use LinkedIn video, which is great. So if you've connected with someone on LinkedIn, you can shoot them off a quick video um, as like, a, hey, just following up on my message or just like a, a warm um, a warm intro, essentially. We try to keep our videos short. They're not like movie quality um, or movie <laughs> length by any stretch. Um, and what we try to do is um, also like not overly engineer it. At the end of the day, we are not actors. Like this is not going to the Oscars. If you make a mistake in the recording, you don't have to invest time re-recording it. If you stumble over your words, that's okay. We're all human. Um, so video should be used creatively, but it should not be a time drain. You shouldn't have you or your team spending hours just re-recording videos to get them perfect. Done is better than perfect, um, and a short video will get you where, where you need to go, essentially. But yeah, I would say LinkedIn video and then Vidyard are our two main tools of choice. 
is there an opt is there an optimal length for this video yeah so we would say less than less than well in and around 30 seconds is what we would strive for it's it's hard mm -hmm. to do it's um, hard. I remember I know. <laughs> very hard oh my god i remember when i first started recording videos and i was like how are these a minute and a half i I can't have that much to say. I know. You really have to think about every word you use and be really conscious of um, where you can cut the fillers so you can be concise, you can get to the point um, and you can deliver value in that short message. Exactly. It's the way Josh Brown likes to say, cut the fluff. So it applies to emails just as well as it does to your video. Cut yeah. this unnecessary phrases. They know why you're recording the video anyway. Just get exactly. to the point and then you might actually make it in 30 seconds, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. So um, if we are talking about an SDR team, right, that's uh, prospecting into mid-market enterprise, um, their day must be filled out with all sorts of activities. They have to make calls, maybe also send out manual personalized emails, record videos. So what does this day look like? Mm -hmm. What other activities are involved as well? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think the most successful SDRs are the SDRs who can be incredibly organized with their time who know how to prioritize um, and who, who time block, who dedicate certain times to certain activities. They know where they're going to get the impact from the effort that they invest. So there are a couple of things I would say for our enterprise SDRs that are incredibly important. These are important for our mid-market SDRs too. Um, but um, first of all, account research. So for enterprise in particular, we would expect our SDRs to spend time every day researching their accounts. Um, and I, one of the best things we did was actually give them a framework to follow to do that, where they should go and what information they should look for. And then that information that they gather serves as a guide for them when they're building messaging, when they're going into different business units, when they're gathering information through the conversations that they have, that's very much a living, breathing document. So a great SDR will spend, a great enterprise SDR will maybe spend one to two hours a day doing account research. Um, but they'll also spend time aligning with their account executive. That doesn't, again, have, that doesn't have to be every day in terms of like a formal conversation or jumping on a Zoom. It can be async over Slack, but they should be talking every day because that partnership with their account executive is so crucial. Crucial. Whether it's on the mid-market side or the enterprise side, the better the partnership and the alignment between the SDR and the AE, the more successful outcomes you're going to get. Because the SDR has a chance to get feedback from an experienced seller. That experienced seller can help an SDR formulate a hypothesis about an account that why. Why this prospect? Why this business? And why now? They're crucial for that. So that alignment to um, the account executive is key. And we see our best SDRs stay really close to their account executive and they'll be in constant communication. And the rest of the day is on that execution, as you've called out yourself. So executing on their tasks and being really consistent in that. It's not, you know, one day where you blast them all out and then like a really low task day. Um, it's trying to be consistent day after day. And we've tried to set daily expectations for our team. So they know if I hit these, these goals every day, um, if I if my quote is here and I do this every day consistently, I know that I'm putting myself in the best position to actually get to my number. Um, so executing on tasks. And then I think the final thing is enablement. So whether that's formal enablement, whether it's formal training that you're doing with your team um, in team meetings or in um, dedicated sessions uh, or whether it's learning opportunities that they're gathering themselves, whether it's connecting with a mentor um, or uh, reviewing calls on Chorus or on Gong. Um, the SDRs will typically spend um, time every day reviewing, learning, um, improving what they're doing. Um, yeah, so overall, time spent mapping, time spent account researching, aligning with AEs and executing. And then doing that regularly without these doing bumps, it, right, in activity, as you mentioned. Yeah, doing it regularly. Yeah. Awesome. And I think that's it, right? It's planning like the typical day of an SDR should be really structured. The time should be well spent um, and the time should be dedicated to specific things. One of the things I always mm -hmm. say to my team is if you've dedicated time for something specific and you're not done at the end, move on because you need to get on to the next task. So it's OK for us to move on if we're not totally done. Uh, going back to the like done is better than than perfect. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I mean, I think getting rid of the perfectionism, it in sales, this is definitely something that you have to do. <laughs> you got, yeah. Cause there's, there's not, you know, yourself, there's not enough time in the day. Your inbox goes off. You have to react to a message that's just come in. You mm -hmm. have to be so diligent with your time and removing the trying to be perfect, especially in the SDR world. We could try and craft the most beautiful email ever, but it, we may not get a response. It may not get an open. So we have to do the best we can in the time we can, essentially. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big learning that everyone goes through. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so if we are talking about a prospecting sequence into mid-market, what would be the average number of touch points? Today, we've yeah. al already thrown out a few, uh, like some information about it, like a couple weeks, a month, maybe even longer, at least six emails, nine emails, and then along with other touch points. So it's been already here. What What, what is your strategy? Oh, good question. This? So I think the first thing on that, I love that, that like there's been lots of different takes on this because I really believe first and foremost that your sequences, your cadences, that strategy needs to work for you and it needs to work for your team and your prospect. And the most important thing that is having a starting point and then iterating on that starting point frequently. So making sure that you're being data driven in your reviews of that, um, those sequences that you might use, uh, whether that's on a monthly or a quarterly basis, that you're actually sitting down and looking back at it. But the most important thing is just picking a starting point and you can learn from there. Generally, um, I think 15 to 20 touch points across a three week period will set you up for three to four week period will set you up for the best mm -hmm. success. Um, I think the important thing is you shouldn't be 15 emails or 15 calls or 15 uh, LinkedIn messages. They should be interspersed throughout the multiple channels that we use um, and they should be tweaked and tailored depending on who you're actually talking to. Um, so that's where I would aim. And I think there's an interesting conversation to be had in that around, well, which parts should be manual? Which parts should be automated? How do we balance that quality and quantity element of our workflow and what we do every day? And that's another thing, again, for the team to decide on its own, right? To test and try. And also depending on which tools they actually have at their disposal to do that. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Because I, I think um, one of the things that it's really important to do when you're building out these um, these kind of sequences or cadences or whatever it is you're putting together is get the input of your team. Get the input of the SDRs. You're actually using them every day. Um, you can use the data and use their input to craft the messaging and craft what's working and then iterate from there. Um, so it's de it's definitely, there are lots of different opinions, um, but having a baseline is really important. Um, I would start with 15 to 20. Okay. Uh, we have just about two more minutes left and I really want to ask this one last question because um, I feel like it's really relevant because when we are, once again, talking about mid-market prospecting, there are way more decision makers that need to be involved at this point. So this is where multi-threading really comes into play. And do you have any also suggestions of what's the best way to do it? How do you arrange these multiple decision makers into sequences? Do you add them at the same time? Do you spread out the touch points when you start? Yep. Yeah. Oh my God, this is such a great question. So first of all- I know, that's why had, we had to discuss we this have to get you go. <laughs> yeah. I'll try and I'll try and be brief. First of all, map the organization, really understand who it is you wanna go after and what it is they do. Break down your buyers. From there, I think there's two different strategies you can employ. You could break it down by persona or you could break it down by um, uh, title and the different tiers of prospects that you might have. So if you break it down by persona, um, you for us, we've got four different Four different potential buyers you could go persona by persona and um do it in batches almost gathering information as you go and intel as you go or you could go by tier of prospects starting with your c-suite and working your way down um through the seniority ranks um i think doing it in batches is much more effective than getting everyone in in one go um because you get to employ what you learn along the way in your messaging you can start to use intros you can start to use intel to understand the org a little bit more rather than going at every single person from the get-go um we're being a bit more a bit more clever in our approach by going bit by bit and gathering gathering the intel as we go great um thank you so much kate
really it was a blast i personally learned so much a lot of really helpful insights along the way you know from the very beginning just thinking about it equipping the tool with the necessary teams enabling the sdrs really to do the job and then also leveraging the creative approaches the direct mail the multi-channel outreach the video as long as also doing the multi-thread and involving the relevant people in the cadence. So thank you so much for taking the time. Once again, it was a blast and it was really nice to meet you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, I would absolutely love to connect with anyone who has any questions. So shoot me a message on LinkedIn or at kate.ohamlin at segment.com. Um, appreciate the time. Have a lovely day, everyone. Thanks, Kate. Bye.